viewers and random Doctor Who fans. With the return of Doctor Mysterio hitting our TV screens in a couple of days' time, I thought it would be as good a time as any to take a look back at the Christmas specials that we've had over the last 11 years and then put them in order from worst to best. Now remember, this is just my personal opinion. If you don't agree with it, that's okay, but let me know why in the comments section. So without further ado, let's get this show on the road. Number 11, it's the Doctor, the Widow and the Wardrobe. This is at last place because it's just dull. It's completely the opposite of what a Christmas special should be. It has these great comedic actors in it, such as Alexander Armstrong and Bill Bailey, and it just completely wastes them. The characters are annoying, especially the children. Apart from an action-packed opening and a somewhat heartfelt ending, this is just boring the whole way throughout. This should have been... The Land, the Witch and the Wardrobe, but in the Doctor Who universe, and instead all we get is something that's genuinely depressing, and the tonal shifts are very, very obvious. At number 10, it's Voyage of the Damned. <laughs> this episode rips off an entire episode of Futurama by having the Titanic in space that then gets hit by meteorites, and then it turns into the Poseidon adventure in space. All of the characters in this episode really got on my nerves. Apart from Kylie Minogue, I thought she did well for giving us nothing but cheesy 1980s soap opera acting. The storyline is a complete shambles. There's nothing but plot holes in this, and a lot of the scenes feel like filler just to pad out the episode's runtime. At number nine, it's Last Christmas. You had Nick Frost playing Santa Claus, and you completely wasted it. And also, this episode willingly admits that it's stealing ideas from other movies. In all fairness though, I did love the resolution to the Danny Pink storyline and I thought it was a nice way to wrap up Jenna Louise Coleman's time on the show because you had this great reversal of a scene from the previous Christmas special, The Time of the Doctor, where instead of it being the old Doctor and the young Clara pulling the cracker, we now have the Doctor helping the old Clara pull the cracker and I thought that, that was a nice way to bookend it. And it would have been a great way for Jenna Louise Coleman to leave the show except for the fact that she decided she wanted to stay for Series 9. So that ending turned out to be nothing but a dream and a complete waste of time. And any goodwill I had left for the episode was gone by the end credits. At number 8, it's The Next Doctor. Now this was fun if forgettable. And I loved the whole aspect of David Morrissey's character. Is he really a future version of The Doctor? Is he just some insane person? But ultimately the resolution to it felt very, very flat and underwhelming. Plus the whole idea of a cyber king stomping around 18th century London was so ridiculous. They had to come up for a reason why it's not plastered over the history books in a future episode of the show. At number seven, it's the snowmen. The ice governess and the snow that eats people were both very, very good entertaining ideas. However, the snow sort of reminded me a little too much of the Vashti Narada. Richard E. Grant was in this episode playing one of the aliases of the Great Intelligence. I thought he gave a really great chilling, creepy performance. I also loved Jenna Coleman in this episode. She played the 18th century nanny and I think this is the version that they should have stuck with into the main series. This is the one that should have went travelling with the 11th Doctor, not the present day Clara. And instead of giving us that, they kill her off and they give us this really convoluted ending with the snow turning to rain that made very little sense and I just think it was a wasted opportunity. At number six, it's the Husbands of River Song. This was okay. This was good. This this was passable. It was exactly what it was supposed to be and what it needed to be. Although it did introduce us to Nardoil, which just no, just just no. What I really loved about this episode was the ending because it finally ties up River Song's overly complex storyline, and I really did enjoy the little twist in this episode, which is that for once River finally doesn't recognize the Doctor upon first seeing him. At number 5, it's the time of the Doctor. I thought this was a fantastic final episode for the 11th Doctor, and a great follow-on to the day of the Doctor too. The only downside to this is that it had so much to do in such a short span of time. It had to wrap up all the 11th Doctor's ongoing plot lines, it had to be a Christmas special, and it had to be a regeneration episode at the same time. It had far too many plates to spin, it kinda cocked it up a little bit, and I think this would have benefited from being a two-parter. Much like... Number four, the end of time. I'm gonna count both parts here because, well, it's, it's my list. This was over the top, it was pure cheese, and it was a great way to sum up the 10th Doctor's era. We had the master comeback, Harold Saxon himself, 
through the, the use of magic, yes, but, but still. Uh, we had the Time Lords come back as well. They were trying to break out of the Time War. It was a very dramatic storyline. And we also had all these great callbacks to some of the events and some of the characters that we saw throughout the 10th Doctor's run. True, a lot of people have said that the regeneration is a little bit overblown and way too dramatic. But I, th I think they kind of earned it, because you have to remember, the Tenth Doctor was one of the most loved versions of the character, and to see him go, a lot of fans wanted a big, serious farewell. So I can see why that was done, and I think it was earned. And I think it was also earned because it was Russell T. Davis' final episode anyway, and if he wanted to blow up the TARDIS while the Doctor regenerated, then more power to him. Number three, The Christmas Invasion. This had to be a Christmas special and a post-regeneration episode at the same time, and I think this worked beautifully. I thought it was a really, really clever idea to keep the Doctor out of the action for this episode because, of course, a lot of people were still reeling from the fact that Chris Eccleston had left the show. So it gave you time to miss the Doctor. It gave you time to almost say your goodbyes to the ninth incarnation while you were waiting for the tenth to arrive. So when he does eventually show up at the end of the episode and saves the day, it feels like more of a victory. You feel glad to see this guy, even though you don't really know who he is. And that's another great thing the episode does. While it has the Doctor out of action, it focuses on the characters that it established in the series beforehand. And they ask questions that a lot of fans would be asking as well. Because a lot of younger children would have started watching the series from series one with the ninth Doctor and then to see their favourite character, to see their lead character change his appearance would have left them asking questions like, is this the same guy? Why does he have a new face? And I think the episode answered these questions beautifully. I think it had a great strong resolution and it set up a lot of the plot points that were yet to come in the 10th Doctor's run. Taking the runner-up spot at number two, it's The Runaway Bride. This is a great Christmas special. It has a nice mix of action, comedy, drama, and sci-fi all put together in a brilliant Christmas pudding of an episode. I love Catherine Tate as Donna Noble. She has to easily be my favorite companion of the new series of Doctor Who because she doesn't swoon over the Doctor. She doesn't make eyes at the Doctor. She calls him on his crap. In fact, in this episode, it's the first time they've ever met each other. She's desperately trying to get away from the Doctor to get back to her own mundane life. I thought that was really, really funny. There's some great action in this episode as well, especially when the Doctor has to chase down Donna, who's trapped in a taxi, being driven by one of those robotic Santas, in the TARDIS. And it's a really, really great scene. I also thought that seeing the world being put together with the spaceship at the center of it, I thought that was handled really, really beautifully. And also, Sarah Parrish is a gigantic red spider. What's not to love? And at number one, it's a Christmas Carol. This, in my opinion, was perfect. It has this great tone and setting that's uniquely Christmas in only a way that Doctor Who can do. Michael Gambon was expertly cast as the Ebenezer Scrooge type character. There were some really great creative ideas in this, such as the fish and the shark that can swim in fog. Even Catherine Jenkins, someone with no prior acting experience, gave a great performance too. The storyline is ultimately tragic, but in a heartwarming way. And I especially love when the Doctor and young Catherine keep waking up Abigail on Christmas Day each year to take her on these different adventures throughout time and space. It was ultimately heartwarming with gorgeous direction and a unique sci-fi twist on the classic Charles Dickens tale. And Halfway Out of the Dark is one of my all-time favourite Doctor Who quotes. And so that's my list. What did you think? Did you agree? Did you disagree? Let me know in the comments below. And I'll be back very, very soon with my spoilerific review of the return of Doctor Mysterio. In the meantime, if you like this video and you're new to my channel, please hit subscribe for more videos and keep up to date with all my latest news and reviews by liking my Facebook page and following me on Twitter. Thank you so much for watching and have a very Merry Christmas. Goodbye.